All right, we're going to get back into our programming at this point. I am really excited to introduce Bridget Clark Smith. She is someone who is going where a lot of atheists haven't been going, or at least not that I'm well aware. And I think it's important because, um, come on up. Um, she's someone who has made her mission. Uh, are you still in Altoona, PA, or did you just? She was so much smarter, yet my people come from Pittsburgh, so I still have relatives all over the state. I know Altoona well. Um, she is someone who has made her mark in atheism, letting senior Americans know that being godless is a good choice they are able to make. I want to thank you so much. <laughs> So uh, once again, let us, let us have a round of applause for our fabulous speaker, Bridget Clark-Smith. Yay! I am empowered because I'm the oldest person in the room. <laughs> Was anyone here born in the 20s? Ah, see? Good. Where I live in La Costa Glen, I'm one of the youngest. <laughs> I'm only 86, and most of the people there are in their late, late 80s and 90s, and several friends that I have are in their 100s. <laughs> yeah. this, this is interesting. The couple that live near me, the Gusenbergs, are both over 100, the couple, the man and the woman. Walter Levine is 100 on June the 13th. He will be 100. And his friend that graduated from, him, well, from the same high school back in Jersey is uh, Hershey, Harvey Hirsch, but everyone calls him Hershey, and he will be 100 February the 14th of the next year. So it's really a fun place to be in most instances. But I moved in there six years ago. My daughter, Renee Young, a physical therapist, wanted me to move in nine years ago. And I said, I'm not ready yet. So when I was ready six years ago, I moved in. And one of the things that you do when you move in, you go down to the dining room, and since you're new, you don't really know everyone. So they ask you if you'd like to be seated with someone. And this particular day, I said yes. I had just had a shot of steroid in each hip in my bursa. My bursas were bothering me, so I was on crutches. I put the crutches up against the wall, and I was seated with this darling, old, old couple. I mean, this couple was really near D-Day. <laughs> and they were just adorable. And I, I had put my crutches against the wall, as I said. And a woman came from the dining room from the back. And as she came past my table, she looked at the crutches. And she looked at me. And she said, are you a Christian? And I had never had a question like that asked of me before. I hadn't been a Christian all of my life, even though my father, who when, when he was drinking, we went to the Calvary Baptist Church, and when he was sober, we went to the Third Presbyterian. <laughs> but I used to run out of the Calvary Baptist Church because I didn't like the preacher running around the room after me. So I would go one block away to the Black Baptist Church, and that was fun. I would sit in the last pew, and I would watch them rolling in the aisles and, aisles and singing. And I thought it was wonderful, and that's where I gave my nickel, because that was a much better show than the Calvary Baptist Church. <laughs> then at the Third Presbyterian Church, when I was eight years of age, I played the piano. And I played 
Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. He is weak and I am strong. Oh, oh yeah, oh yes. Then Miss Poet, <laughs> the, the head of the downstairs Sunday school would come running over and say, no, you are weak and he is strong. And I said, I'm not weak, I'm strong, and I don't even know who he is. So, <laughs> so she would go up and get my father, bring my father down, he'd give me a few pats on the tukas, and then he would go back upstairs. And then she would say, play it again, and sing it again. So I would play Jesus Loves Me, this I know again. And when I got to that part, I would go, hmm, <laughs> In my mind, I'm saying, he is weak and I am strong. But she, she said, why aren't you singing the words? Well, anyway. But that, I, I, never, I never converted because I, I never really was a Christian. Well, the woman after she said, are you a Christian? And I said, no. And she said, well, what are you? And I said, I'm an atheist. And oh, she... she <laughs> I'm, I'm rather new at the cost of Glen and saying I'm an atheist is not really cool. <laughs> so she looked like she was on fire and she went out of that place. And this little old man and woman, they're darling. The woman said, oh my goodness. She said, we're atheists, but we like to remain anonymous. Well, for the next six or seven months, that's all I could think about. I just labored over the fact that these people are so close to not being on this planet any longer, and they feel that they n cannot admit how they feel, what they are. And so I decided to go to the head of activities and tell her what I was going to do. <laughs> I, I wanted to have a club. I wanted an atheist anonymous club. She said, well, you'll have to take the A out of it. And I said, no, that's why I'm doing it. But I, I got my way. It was a lot harder than I'm telling you right now. Much more difficult. But we had these atheist anonymous meetings once a month for three years. And I had actually 13 anonymous, uh, I had actually 13 atheist people speaking. And uh, so that would be 23 uh, other. I'd like to, uh, I'm, go I'm gonna read you the first, the first poster I put up. Atheists Anonymous, a new group of devoted to good fellowship for those who have no invisible means of support. <laughs> for those who do and would like to share, for those somehow still undecided agnostics. Meet now before being separated for all eternity. Come to the San Simeon Room in Fairway at 5 to 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, 18th August, 2010. Yeah. 2010, 2010. Dinner afterwards in Monterey Restaurant, refreshments provided at, at this AA meeting. Bring your own alcohol. <laughs> well, we... We had, a, we had a turnout of 16 out of 900 residents at La Costa Glen. But that wasn't bad. As it went on, 36 months, we had more and more. Uh, the most we ever had was at a Buddhist meeting. We had 93 and had to turn 20 of them away. It happened to be my son, who, who is a Buddhist, Clark Young from Santa Monica. He's a family law attorney, but I even put his picture on the poster, so that could be why he, 
why we got so many ladies <laughs> at the meeting. But I'm just going to tell you which ones we did have represented. We had Protestant. I've got to tell you about the Protestant one. Dr. Thiel came from Solana Beach, California. I live in Southern California in Carlsbad at La Costa Glen. He was speaking, and some of my good Jewish friends were at the um, meeting as well. And he's telling how, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you're going to hell and burn forever. And my friend May Weinstein put her hand up and she said, Reverend, do you mean to tell me that I'm going to hell because I don't believe in Jesus Christ? And he started stammering, well, not really, but um, uh, <laughs> he really was so confused he didn't know what to say. That was a really good meeting. <clears throat> and we, we've had Quaker, um, Islamic. Now, she was one of our best speakers ever. Her name, if you ever want to get her to speak to a group, her name is Dr. Gada Osman. And she is the head of Mideastern Studies at USD. She was excellent. But... Um, she, she had a, a large, large crowd there, too. We had a, a good crowd for that one. Then the next one was the Buddhism. We had 93 for that and had to turn 20 of them array, away. We had creationism. Um, we had religions and the right to die, Mormon, Judaism, Native American. And when we had the Native American, the speaker brought her little girl who was 11 years old. And she went out and walked around the grounds with some people at La Costa Glen. La Costa Glen is a beautiful place. It's probably one of the finest senior residences I've ever seen. And my daughter is a physical therapist who, who had me go there. She said the same thing. She said in all of Boston, Alaska, San Francisco, LA, wherever she had been, New York, Excuse me, it's that, that wind tunnel and that air conditioning coming down. But um, it's really a, a beautiful, beautiful place. And the, and the little girl went out and looked at all the waterfalls and all the foliage that we have and landscaping. And she came back in and she said, Mommy, these people get to be in heaven before they die. <laughs> That was, I thought that was sweet. We had humanism, Roman Catholic, Scientology, palliative care, Christian science, a cross by any other name. We have a cross in California that's controversial. Science of mind, coalition of reason, Bible, the poison word, secular US policy, religion motivated child neglect, it was excellent. Search for historical Jesus, failures of prayer. I'm just giving you the names of some, most of them. Why, believe, why we believe in God, the tenacity of religion, nuns, N-O-N-E-S, and religion, nuns and atheists, and the last of all was good without God. He was Professor Gary Zarno, president of Kehal Am Humanist Jewish Community of San Diego. But those were the ones that we had, and I, I took a lot of flack from um, the head of activities, but she was only doing her job, and she is a, she's a hard worker, very hard worker, Michelle. But she would say things to me like, you know atheism is a religion. I said, really? I said, if atheism is a religion, then abstinence is a sexual position. <laughs> uh, 
I wish it were a religion so we could get a, we could get a tax break. But even more than that, I, I wish that religions had to also pay taxes. I just say. Ninety-two people, residents, have come up to me in La Costa Glen to this date and have told me that they are atheists. They don't want anyone to know it. And I said, why do you think I'm doing this? I mean, this is tough. We know it. We wouldn't want to be in your shoes. <laughs> but they admit to me that they are atheists, and they wouldn't want to come out because then their friends wouldn't like them. They wouldn't, they wouldn't play bridge with them. And I said, are you kidding me? What are your friends? He said, well, mostly Christian. So, that, and that's, that's a friend? That's a friend? That's so ridiculous. I, I still can't understand it. But we do have, oh, I, we have 10, we had at that time 10 to 15% Jews as the residences of, Ca of La Costa Glen out of 900. I will tell you that every meeting we had, every monthly meeting we had for 36 months, 50% of my audience were Jews, which is very interesting, but they're curious, they want to know, and they weren't all atheists. They weren't probably, probably 13, 14% of them were, were atheists, but the others just wanted to come and, and listen and hear and learn and think I had a call from a woman resident while I was having these meetings. She called me on the phone, didn't give her name, and she said, I'd like to come to those meetings. I hear they're very interesting, but I don't want anyone to think I'm an atheist. And I said, well, most of the people that come are not atheists, I'm sure. I said, just come, you know, come along. She said, well, I wouldn't want to sit next to an atheist. <laughs> and I said, well, you wouldn't want to sit next to Bill Gates or Warren Buffett or Stephen Hawking or Andy Rooney or <laughs> George Carlin <laughs> or myself because I'm an atheist. <laughs> but she said, oh, they're not atheists. And I said, well, they say they are. <laughs> Why anyone in their right mind would say they are if, if they're not, I mean, they probably wouldn't. Now, while, while I'm doing all this and having all these meetings, Mark Sauer from KPBS in um, San Diego, Los Angeles, called me and wanted to know if they could come to my apartment and if I could have a few people there that they could ask questions of. And I said yes, because I thought I was doing um, La Costa Glen a favor. I mean, what, what good publicity for the people that are interested in KPBS. They might get some new residents. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I wasn't thinking right. <laughs> but anyway, they came, they made the films, they sent the films, they were everywhere. I mean, just a year ago, we actually had uh, calls from Paris, France, and one daughter told her mother, who is a resident there, Millie Carroll, she said, oh, mother, I just saw that KPBS, PBS commercial, and, um, the movie, the film of Bridget and you and some other people at La Costa Glen promoting atheism. Well, 
that's not the only one I got. I, I got from people letters and emails from people in Idaho and other places that said, you know, I always thought that those senior residences were just all Baptist places. But since I saw the KPBS, I mean, that's definitely where I'm going to come when I need a senior residence because you have all these great things happening. The other thing that um, Michelle had told me is that the reason they didn't want atheism there is because they don't have anything religious at La Costa Glen. And I said, Michelle, please, what are Bible studies? You have Bible studies. How about communion? You have communion. On Sundays, you, you have church in the Brentwood Theater. You have buses every single Sunday that take all these people to their churches that they go to. What do you mean? She said, oh, that was 100 years ago. I said, oh, okay, so atheist is starting right now, so, you know, have it for 100 years. But <laughs> the place had only been open for 14 years. But, but I mean, that's, that's the kind of good thinking that goes on. It's hard to, uh, it's hard to beat. In religion, faith is a virtue. And in science, faith is a vice. I'm going to ask for questions in just a bit. And I hope that you all have some really good questions because I have loads of answers. Uh, I haven't stopped this. I stopped this. The very last meeting that we had was just wonderful. We had it out by the waterfall. The menu was great. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the, me the, men the menu was. I'm here for questions. Good. You just, you Thank just you. Wrap up, and I will moderate the questions. Good for, for you. you. Okay, <laughs> you're a good one to do I'm it. Just stand here. Yeah. Out of the way until you're ready for me. Okay, I'm almost ready. Okay, I haven't stopped doing what I've been doing with the atheists at La Costa Glen. Very difficult. And one of the things that I did uh, for one month last October, I think I saw it out here, um, American Free Thought. I had the gentleman, Roderick Bradford, come down, and he spoke every week for four weeks on his four discs. It's a very, very good disc. And then just um, last month, Joe Sorge of Candor Entertainment came down for two days. One day, he took me down on the beach to several beaches and had all the filmmakers and lights and mics and everything down there. And we did, we did a lot with that. And then we came back to La Costa Glen and they had, that was the next day, the, the second day we went back to La Costa Glen. And one of the three owners of all the La Costa Glens that there are, Rick Aschenbrenner, he was with us all day long during the filming, as was the executive director of La Costa Glen, David Armour. And when we had our lunch that day, they, I think, were surprised. We had 12 people, and Joe Sorge, with his cameraman, went down the line to each person and asked what they believed. And my real good friend, Jane Warren, who is Roman Catholic, was the only one at the table who was not an atheist and admitted it. And so that was really, really great. One woman, Rhoda Walsh, who is very well known in the bridge community, um, 
she actually said it's just nonsense. It's like Santa Claus and fairy tale. And then it went on down. And it was, it was really interesting to, to hear all of these things out of their mouths. I'll end with courage is more exhilarating than fear. Well, um, while the mic is coming up here, we have a question right in the front. And uh, yay. I am very involved with uh, the local uh, senior citizen. My, my mother and father were in there until they died. Uh, my grandmother, who is 96, I have a question here. Thank you. Uh, where the hell is La Costa Glen? <laughs> La Costa Glen is, on, is in Carlsbad, California. Yes. Okay. All right. I see a question. A few rows back, dead center. I must say that La Costa Glen is one of the finest, if not the finest, uh, senior residents. It's just marvelous. Do you serve anything at your meetings? And what kind of food do atheists eat? <laughs> well, this one has to have gluten-free. <laughs> no, uh, we don't serve anything at our meetings now. In the beginning, to bring them in, to entice them, we used to have uh, all kind of little goodies set up. And, but. We call it the AA meeting and bring your own alcohol. <laughs> All right, I, thank you so very much. Oh, oh, go ahead, please. Oh, yeah, what, yeah, whatever is this beautiful bottle? This beautiful bottle says Atheist Anonymous to Bridget Clark Smith. After you. Can I hold the bottle? Oh, oh okay. I can, I, I'm okay now. Oh, you got it. Found, let it go. A founder of Atheist Anonymous, we celebrate your passion and courage. This was given to me three years ago by David Silverman and Debbie Allen from Coalition of Reason. And I, I treasure this. Thank you so much. Take your time. Take You're so very much, and I will have to take my time. <laughs> Bridget Clark Smith. <laughs> uh, a picture of Madeline Murray O'Hare and myself in Scottsdale on the 22nd oh, wow. Federation of American, <laughs> American Atheists. Oh, wow. amazing. And your hair was perfect then, too. You've always had perfect hair. One of that, I mean, <laughs> yes, of course. I get up looking like this. Well, Beyonce had to find inspiration somewhere, I'm sure. From Jay-Z. <laughs> Lovely. Well, so.